A ghost, perhaps? No, that is surely not the case. What is that look upon your face? I am no ghost, if that is what was on your mind. No. Uh, huh? Who's there? Professor, what are you doing here? Oh? Perhaps I was talking in my sleep. Ah, uh, so you heard me then. Yes, it was a nightmare. I've had them since I was a child. Stupid, pointless dreams I can't control. It's terribly frustrating. Just... my childhood. A time before I had realized who I was destined to become. I had a feeling you'd say that. I suppose I could try, but only if you swear not to tell a soul. I appreciate it. I dream of... my older brother, paralyzed, helpless. My older sister crying for help that never came, the youngest babbling words beyond meaning. I see my family dying slowly, waiting in the darkest depths for a glimmer of light. I once had ten siblings, eight older and two younger. Such a large family, and yet I became the heir to the throne. Do you know why? Every last one of them was crippled by disease, or lost their mind, or died. I was the only one left who could inherit the throne. Things kept getting worse. The darkness kept getting darker. In the end, I was the only one who survived. The nightmares are a reminder. To never forget. To never allow such terrible things to happen again. Even now, I'm the only one who can carry the weight of the Adrestian Empire. The future of the Empire. Of everything depends on me. Hmm. I shared more than I intended to. I suppose there's something in the air tonight. I've never told anyone about my past before. Please, forget I said anything. Sleep well, my teacher. Oh, it's you. Out late again, I see. What brings you here? I just wanted some fresh air. There's a lovely breeze tonight. I always wander outside when sleep evades me. So I see. Still, it's ill-advised to stay up so late. I should get some sleep too, but... Have you ever felt a sort of longing for the outdoors? I have. There are times I long for the warmth of the sun, for a sweet breeze on my face. Do you remember what I told you the other night? About... My past? None of my siblings had a chance to lead the sort of life they deserved. An ordinary life. My siblings and I were... We were imprisoned underground, beneath the palace. The objective was to endow our bodies with the power of a major crest. I have always possessed the Crest of Saros, inherited through the Hresfeld bloodline. But it was only a minor crest, and most of my siblings bore no crest at all. In order to create a peerless emperor to rule Fodlin, they violated our bodies by cutting open our very flesh. Now here I stand, the fruit of that endeavor, Edelgard von Hresfeld. But that came at too high a price. The others were sacrificed. Ours weren't the only lives devastated by that terrible process. Innocents died as well, without even knowing what they were dying for. And there you have it. The truth of the Hresfeld's empire. The Prime Minister and his gaggle of nobles. They had the empire under their thumbs. My father, the Emperor, tried to stop him, but it was futile. 
My father was nothing but a puppet on a string by then. He was powerless to save us. I know how it all sounds, but when you see my true strength, you will know I speak the truth. I have kept it hidden all this time, but I will reveal to you the power of my second crest. It is the same as yours, the Crest of Flames. When it manifested for me, I swore a silent oath. For the sake of my family, and for all the poor souls whose lives were traded for my existence. For their sake, I will build a world where such meaningless sacrifice is never again sanctioned. As Emperor, I will change the world. I swear it. I'm so sick of it all. There is so much to be done, yet all I encounter are new problems and pitfalls. Ugh. Sometimes I wish I could spend just one day doing absolutely nothing and gorging myself on sweets. Do you mean it? Just the thought makes me happy. But Hubert would never allow it. Indeed. It may not be possible now, but one day we will know the joys of idling. Mark my words. Is that a smirk I spy? Is it so amusing to you, me daydreaming of free time? <laughs> Your silly grin says otherwise. But let's put all that aside for now. There is something I've been meaning to tell you. I'm afraid this might sound a bit sentimental. However, I want to thank you. Because of you, I feel I can walk my faded path without losing myself. If I were alone, I might have lost perspective and become a harsh leader with a heart of ice. But I'm not alone. With you by my side, I'm somehow free to be not only a leader, but simply Edelgard. Until now, no one has been able to surpass me, much less command me. I have always been seen as an untouchable princess or emperor. No one spoke to me as an equal or met my gaze without flinching. It was lonely, terribly lonely. The only person I could rely on as I tried to claw my way out of the darkness was myself. But you, you have been a brilliant light. Somehow you have chased the darkness away. And for that, I will always be grateful. Yes? Oh, it's you, Professor. I was certain it was Hubert coming to drag me back to my duties. Your Majesty, you must know your supreme talents are needed at present. Why not gaze at these documents instead of the sky? Doesn't it? And the worst part is that he's always right, so I can't even argue with him. But that's enough about Hubert for the moment. While I have your attention, I'd like to thank you for your help in that last battle. As you well know, I'm perfectly capable of commanding the army by myself. However, when you're around, it's somehow different. I'm not sure I can properly explain it. I suppose your perspective on the battlefield is simply sharper than mine. When you're devising tactics and tricks for us, it's almost as though you can read the enemy's mind. There's no getting around it. Your talent for strategy far exceeds my own. I'm quite jealous, in all honesty. Is that a fact? Well, if you insist. I suppose a flower from another's field is always more beautiful. I'll admit, I think of you as rather detached. So to hear that you have emotions such as jealousy is... something of a relief. I can't deny it. Ever since I underwent those procedures, I've certainly distanced myself from the ordinary world. Friends. That word somehow doesn't seem adequate. Besides, we've been friends for a long time, you and I. By now, we're so much more than that, at least in my mind. You know, instead of Edelgard, you can call me just L. If you so please. That's what my parents and closest sisters used to call me when I was little. Now there's no one left who calls me Elle. 
But with you, well, I think I could allow it. In fact, it would mean a great deal to me. Why? Hmm. Well, you have stood beside me and shared my burdens. As I said, you are much more than a friend. In truth, you are like family to me. I suppose that's why. The children of the goddess have been defeated at last. The shape of the world will be forever changed. Humanity is free now. The world is ours once again. Can you believe it? True. There is still much to be done. We can't ignore the possibility that our enemies will resurface one day. In the end, the fate of this world depends on the choices we make. I don't know what the future holds, but come what may, will you stay by my side? You chose to protect me at the Holy Tomb. Will you choose me again? What I'm trying to say is, I need you. You called me L. That's... I... That means more than I can say. And this ring... It's lovely. Thank you, my dearest friend. I will happily accept it. I must admit, I feared my feelings would be unrequited. So long as I had you by my side, it never mattered how many enemies I amassed. You were all I needed. All this time, I longed to share my feelings with you, and it seems you wished for the same. Now, our wishes have come true. This feeling, it's overwhelming. I promise the same. Together we can achieve anything. We will crush those who slither in the dark, and restore peace and order to Fodlan. I will then find a suitable successor, and hand over the reins of the Empire. When all that is done, it will be just the two of us. I look forward to starting our life together in the light of a glorious new dawn. Yes, that is all we can do for now. We must remain focused on our goals. To think that I may truly call you my partner and equal now. The solitary reign of Edelgard has come to an end. From now on, we walk this path together. With time and care, the darkness shrouding this world will be lifted. You and I will become the light that shines over Fodlan, just as you have shined upon my life. No ghost would dare set foot in here. What is that look upon your face? I am no ghost, if that is what was on your mind. No. Uh, huh? Who's there? Professor, what are you doing here? Oh, perhaps I was talking in my sleep. Ah, oh, so you heard me then. Yes, it was a nightmare. I've had them since I was a child. Stupid, pointless dreams I can't control. It's terribly frustrating. No, they're just worthless dreams of the past. Talking about it won't change a thing. I had a feeling you'd say that. I suppose I could try, but only if you swear not to tell a soul. I appreciate it. I dream of... my older brother, paralyzed, helpless. My older sister crying for help that never came, the youngest babbling words beyond meaning. I see my family dying slowly, waiting in the darkest depths for a glimmer of light. 
I once had ten siblings, eight older and two younger. Such a large family, and yet I became the heir to the throne. Do you know why? Every last one of them was crippled by disease, or lost their mind, or died. I was the only one left who could inherit the throne. Things kept getting worse. The darkness kept getting darker. In the end, I was the only one who survived. The nightmares are a reminder to never forget, to never allow such terrible things to happen again. Even now, I'm the only one who can carry the weight of the Adrestian Empire. The future of the Empire, of everything, depends on me. Hmm. I shared more than I intended to. I suppose there's something in the air tonight. I've never told anyone about my past before. Please, forget I said anything. Sleep well, my teacher. Oh, it's you. Out late again, I see. What brings you here? Is it that obvious? I despise being cooped up when sleep evades me. I just have to get some fresh air. So I see. Still, it's ill-advised to stay out so late. I should get some sleep too, but... Have you ever felt a sort of longing for the outdoors? I have. There are times I long for the warmth of the sun, for a sweet breeze on my face. Do you remember what I told you the other night? About... my past? None of my siblings had a chance to lead the sort of life they deserved. An ordinary life. My siblings and I were... We were imprisoned underground, beneath the palace. The objective was to endow our bodies with the power of a major crest. I have always possessed the Crest of Saros, inherited through the Hressfeld bloodline. But it was only a minor crest, and most of my siblings bore no crest at all. In order to create a peerless emperor to rule Fodlin, they violated our bodies by cutting open our very flesh. Now here I stand, the fruit of that endeavor, Edelgard von Hressfeld. But that came at too high a price. The others were sacrificed. Ours weren't the only lives devastated by that terrible process. Innocents died as well, without even knowing what they were dying for. And there you have it. The truth of the Hressfeld's empire. The Prime Minister and his gaggle of nobles. They had the empire under their thumbs. My father, the Emperor, tried to stop him, but it was futile. My father was nothing but a puppet on the string by then. He was powerless to save us. I know how it all sounds, but when you see my true strength, you will know I speak the truth. I have kept it hidden all this time, but I will reveal to you the power of my second crest. It is the same as yours, the Crest of Flames. When it manifested for me, I swore a silent oath. For the sake of my family, and for all the poor souls whose lives were traded for my existence, for their sake, I will build a world where such meaningless sacrifice is never again sanctioned. As Emperor, I will change the world. I swear it. Ugh, I'm so sick of it all. There is so much to be done, yet all I encounter are new problems and pitfalls. Ugh, sometimes I wish I could spend just one day doing absolutely nothing and gorging myself on sweets. Do you mean it? Just the thought makes me happy. But Hubert would never allow it. Indeed. It may not be possible now, but one day we will know the joys of idling. Mark my words. Is that a smirk I spy? Is it so amusing to you, me daydreaming of free time? I see. I'm finally getting an idea of what you think of me. 
But let's put all that aside for now. Ugh, I'm so sick of it all. There is so much to be done, yet all I encounter are new problems and pitfalls. Ugh, sometimes I wish I could spend just one day doing absolutely nothing and gorging myself on sweets. You sound just like Hubert. Am I not allowed a fleeting moment of self-indulgence? But Hubert would never allow it. Indeed. It may not be possible now, but one day we will know the joys of idling. Mark my words. Is that a smirk I spy? Is it so amusing to you, me daydreaming of free time? <laughs> Your silly grin says otherwise. But let's put all that aside for now. There is something I've been meaning to tell you. I'm afraid this might sound a bit... sentimental. However, I want to thank you. Because of you, I feel I can walk my faded path without losing myself. If I were alone, I might have lost perspective and become a harsh leader with a heart of ice. But I'm not alone. With you by my side, I'm somehow free to be not only a leader, but simply Edelgard. Until now, no one has been able to surpass me much less command me. I have always been seen as an untouchable princess or emperor. No one spoke to me as an equal or met my gaze without flinching. It was lonely, terribly lonely. The only person I could rely on as I tried to claw my way out of the darkness was myself. But you, you have been a brilliant light. Somehow you have chased the darkness away. And for that, I will always be grateful. Yes? Oh, it's you, Professor. I was certain it was Hubert coming to drag me back to my duties. Your Majesty, you must know your supreme talents are needed at present. Why not gaze at these documents instead of the sky? No? Well then. And here I thought my Hubert impression was second to none. But that's enough about Hubert for the moment. While I have your attention, I'd like to thank you for your help in that last battle. As you well know, I'm perfectly capable of commanding the army by myself. However, when you're around, it's somehow different. I'm not sure I can properly explain it. I suppose your perspective on the battlefield is simply sharper than mine. When you're devising tactics and tricks for us, it's almost as though you can read the enemy's mind. There's no getting around it. Your talent for strategy far exceeds my own. I'm quite jealous, in all honesty. Is that a fact? Well, if you insist. I suppose a flower from another's field is always more beautiful. I'll admit, I think of you as rather detached. So to hear that you have emotions such as jealousy is... something of a relief. Oh, but you are. Don't even try to argue. But I suppose I'm much the same. I've also distanced myself from the ordinary world. Friends. That word somehow doesn't seem adequate. Besides, we've been friends for a long time, you and I. By now, we're so much more than that, at least in my mind. You know, instead of Edelgard, you can call me just L. If you so please. That's what my parents and closest sisters used to call me when I was little. Now there's no one left who calls me Elle. But with you, well, I think I could allow it. In fact, it would mean a great deal to me. Why? Hmm. Well, you have stood beside me and shared my burdens. As I said, you are much more than a friend. In truth, you are like family to me. I suppose that's why. The children of the goddess have been defeated at last. The shape of the world will be forever changed. 
Humanity is free now. The world is ours once again. Can you believe it? True. There is still much to be done. We can't ignore the possibility that our enemies will resurface one day. In the end, the fate of this world depends on the choices we make. I don't know what the future holds, but come what may, will you stay by my side? You chose to protect me at the Holy Tomb. Will you choose me again? What I'm trying to say is, I need you. You called me L. That's... I... That means more than I can say. And this ring... It's lovely. Thank you, my dearest friend. I will happily accept it. I must admit, I feared my feelings would be unrequited. So long as I had you by my side, it never mattered how many enemies I amassed. You were all I needed. All this time, I longed to share my feelings with you, and it seems you wished for the same. Now, our wishes have come true. This feeling, it's overwhelming. Absolutely not. I won't allow it. From now on, we face the world and carry our burdens together. We will crush those who slither in the dark and restore peace and order to Fodlan. I will then find a suitable successor and hand over the reins of the Empire. When all that is done, it will be just the two of us. I look forward to starting our life together in the light of a glorious new dawn. It will be a long and difficult path, I'm afraid, but we must remain focused on our goals. To think that I may truly call you my partner and equal now. The solitary reign of Edelgard has come to an end. From now on, we walk this path together. With time and care, the darkness shrouding this world will be lifted. You and I will become the light that shines over Fodlan, just as you have shined upon my life. Sometimes I wonder if your life could have taken you down a different path. If you had never met me and entered my service, you might have had a more peaceful... A more tedious path. Inconsequential and spoiled rotten, like so many other nobles. Never. My duty to you is no mere obligation. I chose this. I had thought that would be obvious to you. I understand you well. Better than anyone. But when I see you at the monastery, studying with the others, it makes me wonder what kind of life you might have had without me. That's all. Such a life may have had its appeal. I thought I'd left my years of carefree innocence behind me. But I cannot deny that I find myself enjoying my time at the monastery. I feel the same way. That enjoyment, however, is only thanks to you. Standing by your side is all that truly matters to me. I see. Then I won't speak of such things again. If it's really what you want, I'll gladly keep you by my side. The path I must walk is soaked in blood. It's a path that can lead to madness, can snatch away one's future, and can even take one's life. And the pool of blood at my feet is growing larger. Those stains can never be washed clean. Please leave the violence to me. A leader must be seen as pure, above the fray. Allow me to paint the path that lies before you, red with the blood of your enemies. I will do it gladly. We've come such a long way. After all, I was only four years old when we first met. From your perfect memory, Lady Edelgard, I expect nothing short of the utmost precision. Do go on. Please don't mock me with such frivolous praise. I can hardly recall that day. <laughs> Forgive me. I suppose I must have been six at the time. I have no recollection of it. My earliest memory of you is of when you were injured. I recall being scolded most sternly by my father. You are Lady Edelgard's servant, he said. 
You must protect her with your life. I had no idea. But House Vestra has served House Fressfeld for generations. Given that, I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Indeed. After that, I made certain to accompany you wherever you went. That is, until... the incident. Ah, when my uncle, Lord Arundel, defected to the kingdom and took me with him. The sensation of loss that overcame me on that day defies all description. It was as horrific as if I'd lost all my limbs. I left the city in a mad rush to rescue you. My father sent soldiers to capture me. I fought them off for three days, but they did finally manage it. Of course, I was only ten. I never would have reached Ferdiad. I've never heard that story before. So there are things you've never told me. It wasn't important. That's beside the point. I wish to know these things. If there's anything else you're keeping from me, please tell me at once. Respectfully, I decline. Why? It's a simple order. I really must know- Speaking of your orders, there was a task you gave me earlier which I have yet to carry out. Excuse me. Wait just a moment! <sighs> I just hope he's not hiding anything too worrisome. And that concludes my report. Hubert, I can't shake the feeling that you're keeping more secrets from me. I have told you before, there are secrets even I am unwilling to share. I remember. However, I am the Emperor now. If the Minister of the Imperial Household does not obey his orders, I have the right to execute him. I fear you have misunderstood me, Your Majesty. It is true that I am officially your minister, but such titles are of little significance to me. I serve you purely out of personal devotion. Perhaps there was a time when I served the Imperial Line due to my duty as a member of House Vestra. But since you returned from the Kingdom, my loyalty has been to you alone. I see. Then you are unwilling to obey my orders as Emperor? Correct. If you prefer to treat this formally, then charge me with a crime. I will gladly offer up my neck to the Executioner. You know I would never do such a thing, and that I pay no heed to the title you bear. It is your own presence and capabilities that I value so highly, Hubert. Titles are meaningless next to such things. Our families have no bearing on this matter, nor does the Empire itself. In that case, Lady Edelgard, I ask you to turn a blind eye to my secrets. They are trifles, beneath your notice. Best I handle them alone. You should focus on the path ahead of you. The Scarlet Path I have carefully prepared. Whether that path is red with blood is not something you need trouble yourself over. As Emperor, I'm obliged to accept that answer. However, as your friend, it irritates me to no end. You speak often of painting the path I walk, yet you do so in secret. I am the one you serve, but you refuse to let me in. I trust you, Hubert. And that is precisely why I want to know everything. Your secret hopes and burdens. All of it. If I'm truly the center of your world, then I wish you would trust me as well as I trust you. <sighs> Very well. You have me beaten. I will tell you as much as I am able. From the assassins I've eliminated, to the gold I've spent on bribes, to the identity of the one I love. Wait a moment. Are you saying you have romantic feelings for someone? Yes. That is the one secret I had particularly hoped to keep from you. Well, that's utter nonsense. You can't possibly keep something so fascinating from me. Who is it? It is you, Lady Edelgard. Did you ever really doubt? <laughs> Hubert. You never cease to surprise me. <laughs> you came at just the right time, Edelgard. Is that so? Yes, I have a story for you. It's about a pair of nobles living about a hundred years after the founding of the Adrestian Empire. One was Derek Von Eyre. People called him the warrior prime minister. 
he bravely led soldiers into battle and mowed down his enemies. And the other... ...was the Emperor of the time. She wagered the throne in a duel against Derek and won. Why don't we do what our ancestors did and have a little duel ourselves? That's what you were going to say. But the answer is no. You interrupted me! The warrior prime minister used a dramatic line to propose the duel, and you did not allow me to say it! My apologies, Ferdinand. Well, at any rate, you were correct in surmising that I was about to challenge you. But you were rather blunt in your refusal. Ferdinand, control yourself. When will you tire of challenging me in pointless competitions? I can quit now if you insist on it. I will not challenge you again. You expect me to believe that? Why do you look so surprised? Of course it is not a valid duel unless both parties are willing. Now that you have refused outright, I must come up with some other way of getting that which I seek. I'm afraid to ask what you could possibly mean by that. Only that I will find some other way of showing everyone that I am superior to you. Huh. I will write a handbill listing your accomplishments, alongside my own more impressive accomplishments. Copyists will produce thousands of these pamphlets and distribute them far and wide. Then everyone will know about my... This has to stop. <sighs> Perhaps I should have ended things with a duel after all. Standing tall, I see. Edelgard, hello. What do you think of this horse? An equine marvel, no? Look how intelligent he is. You can see it in his face. Certainly much smarter than your horse. Oh, what a lovely bloom. Behold, Edelgard. Do you see this blood-red bloom? This is much more impressive than the pale little sprigs you have there. And, as I'm sure you know, redness symbolizes courage and strength. Ferdinand, stop. I can't believe you're wasting my time with a petty one-sided rivalry. What are you complaining about? You told me not to publish my pamphlet, and I complied. I've had enough of your foolish antics. Very well. I will grant you the duel you so desperately desire. But when I win, you must forfeit the right to bother me with your ridiculousness. Forever. Do we have a deal? Ah, so you'll fight me after all? Wonderful. To battle, then! All right, Edelgard. Have at me! As you wish. Ha! It only took you one blow? How? I can't afford to hold back against an opponent like you. I led with my fastest, strongest strike. Fastest and strongest? <laughs> You're just flattering me. I have been defeated. Utterly. I cannot believe I was foolish enough to challenge such a plainly superior opponent. The difference in our skill level is not so great as all that. If you had taken the first strike, you might have won. That's why I didn't give you the chance. I do not think talent is what separates us so much as readiness. I had not the faintest idea of what to expect from a real duel. I was playing, but you were not. That such an ill-prepared noble would think to challenge you? It is laughable. Ferdinand... Ah, the smell, the texture, the smooth finish. This region's tea is the finest in the world. Hello, Ferdinand. You seem to be in a good mood. What is that supposed to mean? Perhaps you expected me to hold a grudge against you after our duel. In fact, I have moved on. Have you now? Well, I'm glad to hear it. I took it hard at the time, I will confess. I always thought that I equaled you in skill, or even surpassed you. But you showed me that I do not come close to matching your talents. Yet a true noble does not give up in the face of defeat. I will continue my training, and one day I will be an elite warrior. That is the path I must take, as a noble and a man of honor. You really are in a good mood. Your determination is admirable. Yes. One day I will surpass your abilities, and I will defeat you in combat. Ferdinand, 
There's something I've been meaning to say to you for a while now. Honestly, I couldn't care less that you were of noble birth. Your fierce determination doesn't come from your bloodline. It's your own doing. The reason I value you and want to be friends with you is because of who you are, not who your family is. Hmm. I have something I would like to say to you, too. Certainly we must recognize the common folk who strive for greatness and attain it. But for those of us born into nobility, things are more complicated. From birth, nobles must excel. If we do not, we will be forced out of our houses. This environment breeds superior individuals, and they in turn recreate the rigorous environment for their own children. Without that cycle, there would be no political elite guiding the world towards prosperity. <laughs> so you're saying that the kind of world I'm striving to create is wrong? I would not go so far as to say your way is wrong, just that another way might be better. If you insist upon undoing the nobility, then we must build something in its place. We can provide free education for all, and then select the highest performing students for more intensive training and tutoring. I truly believe that people are products of their environment. Finding a way to educate the people? Interesting. I'm impressed by how much thought you've given this. No matter what shape the world takes, I'm sure I'll always need people like you by my side. People with strong principles who will argue with me and force me to consider ideas that are contrary to my own. Yes, exactly! Finally, Edelgard, you appreciate how important I am to your cause. I've always thought of you as a valued friend, Ferdinand. That's nothing new. Edelgard, I have to tell you something. I think now is the right time. Do you know what my ancestor Derek Von Eyer said after your ancestor defeated him? He said, You are an imperial beauty. Please, accept me as your husband. Halt, Ferdinand. There's a time and a place for everything. But that time is not now. Hello there, Edelgard. Are you looking for something? You could say that. I'm looking for someone named Linhart who's been skipping lectures again. I see. Well, congratulations, you've found him. Did you want him for something in particular? What else could bring me here other than your complete negligence? Well, perhaps you're interested in hearing my latest theories on the nature of crests. I suspect the formation of crests may be quite different than that recorded in church tradition. Before you go on, is there any discernible benefit to me allowing this babble to continue? Well, of course. And that would be? I suspect you'll find the topic rather entertaining. That's it. What more do you need? Crest research is its own reward. You know, if you ever truly applied yourself, you could become a distinguished scholar. You could use your crest knowledge to benefit the world, or uncover new discoveries in magic theory. Why would I busy myself with such tedious work? I perform this research for my own knowledge. I'm not interested in the world at large. There's nothing wrong with a selfish drive for knowledge, but only if you put it to good use. I'm sure there must be some use. Oh? Then please, tell me what potential uses you have in mind. Well, there are people out there who spend good money on bizarre artistic creations, so I'm sure my not-at-all-useful research could be used as a fine lullaby for the children of the world. A lullaby? <sighs> I have things to do. Just know that this was my last warning. Sure, of course. Goodbye. Linhard, at least try to do some training. Use a staff, or a rod, or a broom for all I care. My apologies, but I cannot train right now. I have plans for later and don't wish to tire myself. Kaspar invited me to train with him, you see. You slept through the whole debate, didn't you? Fine, I'll summarize it for you. Not the whole debate. I closed my eyes only after I knew what reading would cover the topic. There you are. Don't tell me you were sneaking out to do some training. Of course not. I was sneaking out to avoid you. <sighs> How did you find me this time? A mere coincidence. 
Why would you wish to hide from me? Because you're an awful nuisance? Why do you pester me so? To ensure that your talent is not wasted due to your lack of... It's none of your business how I spend my time or how I use my talent. Have you assumed the role of my mother? You overplay the part. She was only half as overbearing. What? What is the matter with you? As house leader, I'm trying to prevent you from causing trouble for yourself and our classmates. Fine. I'll try harder. Really. I'm sure you see all this as my interfering with your duty as a leader. Have you considered how it feels for those of us who serve below you? You are a serious pain, you know. How so? You're like a mother who insists on accompanying her son to his own knighting ceremony. That's taking it a bit far, don't you think? No, I'd say that it's putting it lightly. All your interfering is greatly hindering my research. I see. Very well. You've made your perspective perfectly clear. Linhard, I finally found you. These structures were built more than a thousand years ago and still remain. Amazing. Most interesting, there's a pattern to the saint's emblems carved into each of the sarcophagi. Here, you'll see if you come take a look. Perhaps another time. Right now, I have something to discuss with you. You've said before that you don't care about the usefulness of your research. After giving it some thought, I decided that I'd like to create an institution for Crest and Relic research, and I'd like for you to lead it. All you would need to do is carry out whatever research you like. Somebody else will decide how to make use of your findings. What do you think? I imagine such an environment would suit you quite well. <sighs> Let's be clear that I have my reservations, but I suppose I'll take you up on your offer, if you insist. Although I'm unsure if it's a good idea. If my research dries up, you'll be stuck with a worthless institute. I do hope you understand that, Your Majesty. Why are you skeptical about my proposal? It's because all I've ever cared about is following my own curiosity, wherever it takes me. Being head of some institution and researching as part of an organized team sounds like no fun at all. At that point, it's not research, it's just a job, and one I've been practically forced into at that. However, since I know you've put a lot of effort into preparing this opportunity for me, and since I like you well enough, I will, begrudgingly, take you up on the offer. Well then, I suppose I should be grateful. But I'll be honest, I see little point in bringing you on board if you're so troubled by the idea. Let's put this idea on hold for the moment. I'll figure something out for you by war's end. I have great respect for your talent, Linhart. I'm certain I can find a way to make use of it that's to your liking. Here again, I see. Of course, Your Majesty. I couldn't investigate this place freely when those of the church were around. Understandably. Now, about my proposal to create an institution for Crest and Relic Research. I've decided to move forward with it. As for who will lead the charge... You want me to be in charge of the thing after all, don't you? <laughs> Actually, no. I was just considering some conditions for whoever applies for the job. Conditions? What kind of conditions? To start, I won't allow the position to be a secondary one. That excludes lords who are busy looking after their own territories. Are you suggesting landholding lords would have no means of applying? Quite the opposite. I'm looking for applicants with enough passion for the job that they're willing to relinquish any landholding rights they possess. They will be provided with necessities like food, clothing, and housing, but will receive no further compensation. That said, they will be free to take as much time off as they desire. Do you expect anyone to be interested in such an odd position? That's my hope. Have you gone mad? Demanding someone rescind their land rights and then provide no compensation? Even the unlimited time off is a rather discourteous perk to offer. No one would accept room, board, and endless time to research. <sighs> No one but me. Why must you... Why must I what? 
Why must you understand me so well? I asked you to consider the feelings of those below you. I never expected you to consider mine to this extent. I told you I'd figure out a way to make use of your talents that you'd find acceptable. Honestly, no woman has ever gone through this much trouble for me before. Then have you decided? Yes, I have. I would be most pleased to accept your offer, Your Majesty. Training again. You're certainly working hard, Kaspar. <sighs> oh, Edelgard! You scared me, you should have said something. I did, but no matter. What has your training with such intensity? It's never good to neglect one's training, but overdoing it is ill-advised as well. You could already give any student here a battle they wouldn't soon forget. You think so? Well, thanks. I appreciate that. I can't really stop training, though. I gotta get better if I expect to get anywhere in this world. If memory serves, you're the second son of House Burglies, right? That's right. My older brother is the heir, and there are already too many mouths to feed in our family, so I can't count on any support. I pretty much have to make it on my own, you know? I understand. It's difficult being born a noble. Those who inherit everything also inherit great burdens, but the same can be said of those who inherit nothing. What are you talking about? I don't have any troubles. Who cares if I don't inherit anything? It just means I get to cut a path to my own future. You know what your problem is, Edelgard? You always have to make everything about you. Are you picking a fight, Kaspar? Hey, now come on, I didn't mean to be disrespectful. Always happy to fight, though, if that's what you want. Uh, I have no desire to bicker with you. Good luck with your training. Goodbye. What was that about? I'll never understand her. Kaspar, I've been wondering something. Would you be happier if you were the heir to House Burglies? Of course. My brother probably wouldn't be too happy about it, though. I've got nothing against him, and I'd hate to cause him trouble. So I guess it wouldn't make me very happy at all. You may not want to hear this, but your brother is not a good man. He's lazy and greedy, and has always relied on the knowledge that he would inherit a title. That's my impression of him, anyway. <laughs> you don't hold anything back, do you? But to be honest, you're not too far off. He's got good reason for it, though. Our grandfather was really obsessed with his second wife. She has a son who she really wanted to become the heir. In the end, though, my grandfather had to step down sooner than expected, so everything went to my father instead. My brother is still really worried about having his future taken from him. That's the price of taking your own desires into account when choosing an heir. The concept of nobility is decaying, and it's dragging the Empire into the ground with it. Wow, this conversation is really going there. You may be right, but it's not like the world is ever going to change, right? It must. I intend to create a world where the best are free to rise to the top and succeed, regardless of their bloodline. The nobility as it is now could not exist in a world like that. I'll make sure of it. What do you think would happen to me in that kind of world? Would you appoint me as a general or minister of military affairs? If you were the best suited for that position, I would. Right, so my life would pretty much stay the same. I'd still have to train, get stronger, and use my abilities to cut my own path. I don't know what I'm gonna do after we graduate. I guess I'll just have to fight for you. Is that so? At the base, the front lines, or wherever we might be fighting, I'll be there with all my might! What's wrong, Edelgard? Hmm? Why do you ask? You always look at me funny, but right now you're looking at me more... normal. <laughs> you can seem rather oblivious, but then you go and shock me with your keen insight. Whoa, it's a little harsh. Is it? You only have yourself to blame for the reputation. As for me, I've always thought of you as something of a victim. What is that supposed to mean? 
I mean, you're a victim of Fodlin's antiquated system of nobility. You're skilled and you work hard, yet you still play second fiddle to your less capable older brother. Even still, you fight on, not allowing yourself to be discouraged by it all. People like you help to fuel my fire. If I can only smash this rotten system, I could save you. You've always got a whole lot to say about your grand plans for the future. Just hear me out. I've realized that I was wrong about you. I can now see that you've found a way to live the life you want to live. Simply put, you love working hard, and you love training. You don't know the meaning of surrender. I never thought such a genuine person could really exist. That's a lot to take in. You're not too far off, though. I try to live life the way I want to. I wasn't that way when we first met, but I've changed since then. Nowadays, what you see is what you get. It doesn't matter that you have burdens to bear. Despite that, you never stray from your path. You don't let anything tie you down. I can hardly imagine a life like that. To be honest, I'm a bit jealous. Well, I don't think I could live the way you do, but I admire you for sticking to it. You never let your burdens get you down. You try to push through them instead. If I'm being honest, I changed my mind about you a while back. Is that so? You can be real critical of your minute when you make a mistake. That's true. I certainly make mistakes, but I feel it's important to own up to them. I probably make twice as many mistakes as you, but I don't notice half of them. <laughs> this is no laughing matter, Kaspar. Then again, that's part of how you choose to live as well, isn't it? That it is. But it doesn't change what I promised before. I'm gonna keep fighting for you, Edelgard. Even if we don't live our lives the same way, I'll help cut a path through so you can follow safely behind. <laughs> I don't doubt it. The future is ours, Kaspar. I'm counting on you to help clear the way. Bernadetta, why are you following me? <laughs> um... You were following me quite conspicuously, so why attempt to hide now? I... um... Um... <laughs> Please don't hurt me! Calm yourself, I have no reason to harm you. Forgive me, I beg you! I'll go straight back to my room and you'll never see me again, I swear! Bernadetta. Yes, Lady Edelgard! Please explain why you were following me and why you tried to hide. Is Her Highness saying- The human that you are. I already said no harm will come to you. Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Um, permit me to explain. Lady Edelgard, you are fearless. I look up to you as an example to follow. And that explains it. How? I decided to watch you from a distance, to learn from you, but your presence is, um, intimidating. I got more and more scared until I finally couldn't help but try to hide! Uh, forgive me, I throw myself upon your mercy! Honestly. Look, nobody is truly fearless. Even I have things that I'm afraid of. What? You do? You seem oddly overjoyed at the thought. No, of course not! But, um, what in the world could possibly frighten you? The sea. I find the pitch black of the open sea at night quite frightening. I can't swim, so if the sea were to wash me away, I fear I would never return. The sea? I think I may have seen it once. Maybe. I didn't know you couldn't swim. That's a surprise. Again, my shortcomings delight you. Everyone has fears, as well as things they can't do. How many times must I tell you? <laughs> I really did make you angry! Bernadetta. <laughs> Lady Edelgard, what can I do for you? I appreciate all the effort you're making to overcome your fear of me. Your dedication is commendable. However... I'm just getting in your way, aren't I? 
it, Bernie. You're just an intruder. Nobody wants you around. Stupid! Oh. Bernadetta. Yes? The problem you keep running into is that you don't listen to what people are really saying. That's why your efforts are in vain. You need to listen instead of jumping to your own conclusions. Are you listening to me? Yes! Then why aren't you responding? Um, I wanted to listen until you were finished. Uh, sorry, were you finished then? I was. Then may I please scream now? By all means. But please try to make it a fairly quiet one. Just a tiny one? Um, wait, what was I upset about again? That's weird. I forgot why I was about to scream, and now I don't even need to. What a nice feeling! You're trying your best. I know that. But even so... But, but what? What did I do this time? I'm so sorry! Whatever it is! I'll go to my room and never bother you again! Wait, you didn't let me finish! I was only going to say that... Gardening with you is a lot of fun, Lady Edelgard. I feel the same. You know so much about it, Bernadetta. I looked after flowers a lot back home. I like them. They don't talk, they don't get angry, they don't hit you. And they're sweet. They are sweet. Unlike people, they can all be trusted on sight. You're sweet too, Lady Edelgard. I mean, not sweet, but, um, you know what I mean. You can talk or and get angry all you want. Well, I'll strive to avoid getting angry. You're really kind. I'm less scared of you than I used to be. Most nobles are terrifying. I've had lots of bad experiences with them. But getting the chance to talk to you like this makes me glad I came to the monastery. I'm glad too. I had heard rumors about the reclusive daughter of House Varley, but you're nothing like I imagined. Rumors? About me? Uh, just pretend you didn't hear anything. <laughs> There's no need to be embarrassed. Rumors are meaningless. All that matters is the truth. You're right. I'm not really a recluse now anyway. Not since I came to the monastery. I won't let the rumors bother me. I'm happy to hear it. Actually, I should thank you. Thank me? What for? Wait... Do you mean you need to thank me for all the times I've made you mad? You do, don't you? That mind of yours, no, I mean the grateful sort of thanks. Before I met you, I was more prone to anger. But now, I've changed in that regard. So, thank you for that. Oh, I suppose you're not listening. Oh, I'm done for! Five years worth of resentment is about to crash down on me all at once! Ah! It's okay, Bernadetta. I'm thanking you, not attacking you. Oh, um, I jumped to conclusions again, didn't I? You did, yes. But don't worry about it. Enough talk, don't you think? Let's take care of these sweet little plants. Right. Okay, thank you. Bernadetta, I hope you'll keep spending time with me. Of course I will. Hey, look! This flower's just about ready to bloom. <laughs> so it is. I can't wait to see its true colors. Hey, Aidy. Uh-oh, you're scowling again. You're going to get wrinkles all over that cute face of yours if you don't smile more. <laughs> Hello, Dorothea. I was just lost in thought. There are so many things to be done, to think of them makes my head ache sometimes. So many nobles of the Empire are utterly useless. When I am Emperor, I intend to appoint only those who can actually be useful. It doesn't matter if they're of noble or common birth. Noble or common, eh? Can you really do that? I mean, not that I don't agree, 
I'd make all those nobles vanish if I could. It's not a question of can or cannot. All that matters is doing it and doing it right. The nobility system has only been around for 1,200 years. The concept didn't exist before that. Only 1,200 years, huh? <laughs> you always say such preposterous and extraordinary things, Amy. Yet somehow you actually make it work for you. It's like you're a character from an opera. A character from an opera? Hmm. If an opera is made about my life someday, I wonder how I'll be portrayed. The revolutionary who guided the Empire to a new dawn, or the foolish ruler who took her revolution too far. Well, that all sounds pretty violent. But either way, it would make an incredible opera. Do you figure it'd be a grand action piece full of combat and strife? Or would you prefer a somber political drama? Hail the mighty Edelgard, the red blood stains her story. Heavy as her crown may be, she will lead a soul to glory. To a brighter dawn we shall carry on. Hail Edelgard! That's quite enough, Dorothea. I'm starting to feel more than a little embarrassed. Lovely as your voice is, let's just hope that any operatic productions about me are still a ways off. You're in high spirits today, Dorothea. Yes. I have met someone quite charming recently. I'm hoping we can spend more time together soon. Well, I wish you the best of luck. I wish I had some advice to offer. Alas, I do not. Eh, don't worry too much about it, Aidy. I guess romance isn't really something you're interested in anyway. I'm not completely disinterested. Oh, yeah? Is there someone you have your eye on? Hmm. To be honest, there's nothing resembling romance in my life at present. It's not that I'm disinterested. I'm simply too busy with other endeavors. I have no time to spare for such things. That's not surprising. You're not just any old noble after all. Anyone who has feelings for you... Well, they're in for a pretty complicated life. True, and I can't ignore the possibility that I may have to marry for political purposes. I doubt I'll ever have the opportunity for a passionate romance as long as I live. That's no way to talk. You meet the right person and boom, you have passion to spare. Could be someone you've just met or someone you've known your whole life. There's no telling how life will go. Something could even spark between the two of us. You and I? Now that is an entertaining thought. If such an exciting future is in store, I look forward to it. Oh yeah? <laughs> That's awfully sweet of you, Aidy. Hey, Aidy, take a look at this. I received it as a gift. It was sent from... I don't remember. Anyway, the point is... Dorothea. When you receive a gift, don't you think you should try to remember who it's from? You're right. That's a little thoughtless of me. What's gotten into you lately? You seem mostly uninterested in the various suitors throwing themselves at you. Is something on your mind? Oh, don't worry about me. Everything's fine. I'm just finding it difficult to care about chasing after love as much as I used to. Do you have any idea why? Well... I do have an inkling. You seem reluctant to tell me. Is it somehow my fault? No, no, nothing like that. Okay, I suppose you're not completely wrong, but... How do you mean? Please, just say what's on your mind. When the two of us are together, talking like this, somehow I don't feel like I care about my troubles with love anymore. So it's fine. Hmm. There's nothing wrong with that, of course. But it seems we should get to the bottom of such a drastic change. Maybe we can figure it out if we just... Aidy, I'm telling you, I'm fine. If you push me any further, I'll write an opera about you. I'll do it, right here and now. 
and then I'll sing it in your face. Settle down, Dorothea, I can take a hint. If you insist, I'll drop the subject. Whatever you do, don't write more opera lines about me. My cheeks are probably still red from your last performance. <laughs> well, I can't promise anything. But if I try real hard, by the time the war is over, I might just have an opera written, starring you. No need to worry, though, Aidy. I'll be fabulous as you. A performance they'll rave about for years. <sighs> the frightening part is that I don't know whether you're joking or not. But I do regret to inform you that you won't be playing the role of Edelgard. Why's that? Don't you see? No story about me would be complete without the character of Dorothea. It would be ridiculous for you to play me instead of yourself. Aidy, you really are something special, aren't you? Petra, you seem to be flourishing in your new environment. Is all going well for you? Lady Edelgard, everything is well with me. Thank you for your question. Everyone shows great kindness, even while I am still learning about the language. I'm glad to hear it. After all, a Bridget Royal like yourself is of vital importance to the future of the Empire. If you ever need anything, please let me know. It's my job to watch out for you, after all. If that is your want, I will rely on you if I have the need. However, I will not have that need. I can resolve any problems that occur by myself. I don't doubt it. Perhaps I'm worrying too much. I just don't know what I would say to your family if something were to happen to you. Do not spend your worry on me. In Bridget, there is a phrase we say. You cannot shoot two birds with one arrow. Bridget and I are that second bird. Your first target is... your ambition. Can you disagree? There is certainly truth in your words. I do have ambitions that transcend all else for me. When I ascend the throne, there are certain things I must do. Tell me, Petra, who do you think I am? Huh? I will tell you. I am Edelgard von Hressfeld, and yes, I'm attempting to do what no one else can. I'm prepared to shoot two birds, or even three, with a single arrow. That is the least of the impossible things I will accomplish. If you don't need my patronage, then prove it. Show me your power. Never settle for being the bird. Be the arrow instead. I will take your words to my heart, and you will be seeing my power. I give you my promise. I have been watching you in secrecy, Edelgard. But you and Hubert were noticing me, correct? Well, if you intend to shadow us like that, you can be sure it won't escape our notice. Hubert was primed and ready to... remove you. I ordered him to stand down. You have my thanks. I have been making a decision that I am wanting to learn from you. I was thinking it was enough to be shooting one bird with one arrow. But after speaking with you, I trained with hardness. Now I can be shooting two birds with one arrow. Two pheasants? Are you implying that... Yes, a single arrow. That's astounding, Petra. Hmm. It's perhaps a bit late to explain now, but what I was getting at earlier was actually... <laughs> I am having a joke. You... come again? I really was shooting these birds with one arrow, but my joke is that I did have understanding about what you told me. I took it to my heart. Did you now? You are a person with great bluntness. I am admiring of you. As an emperor, a commander, a warrior, and a friend, you are excelling at all that you do. All of the Empire is resting on... on your shoulders, and that is including Bridget, too. I will not be falling behind you. I will be carrying Bridget on my shoulders, too. And one day, you and I will be facing each other, and we will be shaking hands. <sighs> <laughs> Yes, that much is certain. I can see that you no longer need me to look out for you. You and I are much the same. We dutifully shoulder our burdens and stand tall no matter what. 
It would be foolish of me to deny it. Your words give me great joy. And it also gave me joy to see you being flustered when I was showing you the birds. A cheap trick to be sure, but inarguably funny. To think that you went to all the trouble of shooting two pheasants at once for the sake of a joke. <laughs> well played, Petra. We both are growing every day. I hope we will keep doing so. <sighs> Lysithia, are you alright? You don't look well. Huh? Oh, no, no. I'm fine. Really. Just not accustomed to so much manual labor. You were cleaning the library all by yourself? Yes. The other student who was assigned to tidy up with me wasn't feeling well. So, it's just me. I figured I could at least dust the bookshelves or something, but... I, uh... I got a little carried away. So many books. You probably tired yourself out just moving them from the shelves. As much as I love books, I can't say I love carrying stacks of them to and fro. They're so heavy. Well... Maybe you should think things through a little more next time. Surely you can tell how much physical strength the job is going to require before you begin. I can do without the condescension, thanks. After all, I'm the only one who has to deal with the fact that I've worn myself out. I only said that you should take care of yourself. Especially considering... Considering what? Nothing. Never mind. How about you return to your quarters? I'll finish cleaning up in here. But I want to finish what I've started. I don't mind, really. Please, don't make me repeat myself. <sighs> Fine. As long as you'll finish all this up. I will. Get some rest, okay? Yes, yes. Thank you. If what I heard about Lysithia is true... Hmm... I just don't know how much of it I should believe. Edelgard, do you have a minute? You want to speak with me? How unusual. Please, come in. I'll prepare some tea for us. Have a seat. Would you care for some cake? Yes, please. I never say no to sweets. They're from Enbar. A bit too sweet for my own liking. Isn't that the whole point of cake? Well, more for me. Mm, these are fantastic with this tea. <laughs> True. Well, there's no shortage of them. Help yourself to as many as you like. Now then, you wish to speak with me? Mm, mm. So, I, uh, can tell you know a fair bit about me. Mm, mm. <laughs> Maybe this can wait until you've finished eating? Edelgard, you know a fair bit about me, don't you? What in particular? For example, the fact that I have two crests. Oh? That's hard to believe. No need to play coy with me. It won't work. It's clear my body has succumbed to the intense pressure of bearing two crests. Due to the immense requirements of bearing these crests, my life expectancy is painfully short. You know all of this, right? Actually, this is the first I'm hearing of it. How would I know unless you told me? Still won't drop the act, huh? Despite how obvious you've been with your concern about my health, you're certainly consistent. I'm not really in the mood for these games. Given your rank, you certainly have access to all kinds of information that others do not. Clearly, you'd have heard all about me. Either way, I know now since you just told me. About your two crests, your physical weakness, and your short life expectancy. However, according to the principles of crest research, it's impossible to bear two crests. Unless... you've undergone a blood reconstruction surgery. Is that the case, Lysithia? Correct. It wasn't as though I had a say in any of this. I see. So you've lived through that relentless terror and agony, and survived. You speak of all of this as though you understand it on a personal level. Edelgard, have you? You're a good friend, Lysithia. 
and a valuable member of this army. So I won't have you overexerting yourself. I don't want to lose you. Understand? I understand. <laughs> Good girl. Oh, and if you like those cakes, why not take some with you for later? There's no need to pander to me. But, yes, I'll take those. Thanks. How are you today, Lysithia? Fine, thank you. And yourself? Quite well, thank you. I overheard something recently. Something pertaining to you and your vision for the future. Is it really true that you intend to create a world in which crests no longer exist? It's true. My aim is to dismantle the current system of aristocracy. The only reason nobles enjoy the status they do is because their bloodlines carry crests. If crests lose their value, so will titles of nobility. I really agree with your thinking. My parents have suffered throughout their lives due to their nobility. Due to my own crests, I've never been able to live a normal life. I'm sick of nobility and crests, of all of it. It sounds as if it's truly your mission to change things. I'll pledge my life to your cause, however short it may be. Lysithia. Has your hair always been that color, by the way? Huh? I asked because mine wasn't always this color. I lost all pigment after receiving my two crests. Edelgard, I want a world where people like you and I are no longer victimized. I want you to bring that world into being. If it's within me to help that come to pass, then I'll do whatever it takes. Understood. I promise to do all I can to see this goal to fruition. And I want you to promise something in return. That you will never stop fighting for your life. Whatever terrible fate awaits us, we can fight it and prevail. I need you to trust me on that. Do you promise? I... I promise. I will try my best to believe that. Good girl. Now then, would you care for a sweet cake? Uh, please do not call me that. But, uh, yes. Yes, I would. Hmm. What is on my agenda for this afternoon? Professor Hanneman, may I have a moment of your time? Ah, it's you. Very well. I am quite busy, but if you are here to discuss my crest research, I would be happy to oblige. I'll pass on that offer. I'm just hoping you'll explain something to me. Oh, I doubt if I have anything of particular interest to share. Why did you abandon your noble standing in the Empire? And don't say it was for your crest research. There are institutes for that within the Empire. You could easily have remained a noble and still been able to visit Garrick Monk or request the cooperation of the church. Certainly that was an option, but I desired a better research environment. Treasures and holy artifacts reside here that cannot be examined by someone outside the church. I required access to those things, no matter the cost. But surely your noble status would have allowed you greater funding and resources. Even secrets of the Kingdom and the Alliance would have been easier to obtain as a noble of the Empire. What you say is true. I cannot deny that. Both paths have advantages and disadvantages. Hmm. I see you're unwilling to be forthcoming on that topic. I don't know what you mean. I've heard that you used to enthusiastically research crests for the Empire. You abandoned the Empire, yet retained your focus on crest research. I just wanted to know why. I feel your suspicions of me are unwarranted. I haven't the time now, but perhaps I will tell you more if the opportunity arises. Ah, young Edelgard. This is your first time in this room, yes? That's right. When I was a student, I avoided this place. I couldn't allow the church to learn of my crests, after all. True enough. But now you have come here by your own choice. Can I take that as an indication that you have come to trust me a little more? I suppose so. 
though I'm still bothered by certain things. Tell me, what things might those be? Well, we're fighting to free the world from the Church's control and to unify Fodlin. You must have some idea of what the world I'm seeking to create will be like. With the world freed from the powers of crests, Fodlin's system of nobility will collapse. Precisely. Our current system is founded on the fact that crests are inherited through blood. If we shatter the status quo so that those without crests are no longer at the mercy of those with them, the very concept of nobility will vanish. Why should that have any effect on me? I am no longer a member of the nobility. Perhaps the fate of the nobility is of no consequence to you. But what about that of crests? You've devoted your life to unraveling their secrets. Whereas I seek to create a world where crests are no longer valued, in fact, I would prefer to rid the world of them entirely, if at all possible. Does this not concern you? I see. Ah, uh, I think I finally understand why you've always seemed so unsure about me. You imagine your ambition might crush my dreams. I assure you, there is nothing to worry about. I support your plans and your ideals wholeheartedly. But at the same time, I also believe that the influence of crests will not be so easily quelled. That is why I must continue to research them and unravel all the secrets they hold. I see. Professor Hanneman, I... I owe you an apology. Whatever for? I'm not bothered by you investigating my past. Ah, uh, so you knew. You're right. I'm afraid I found it difficult to quell my doubts. What happened? It was over 20 years ago. I suppose you had just barely been born, now that I think on it. My younger sister was afflicted by a disease of the heart, and she met with an early death. It is easy to lay blame for such things, but I considered crests themselves to be the root cause. Your father bore a major crest, and both you and your grandfather inherited minor crests. Your sister was born without one, but as the daughter of a family in which crests are prevalent, others saw potential in her. That's why she was married off to a certain noble whose influence was waning. He was undoubtedly desperate for power. But no matter how many children she bore him, none manifested a crest. She fell from her husband's favor and was mistreated, ultimately leading to... As an up-and-coming crest scholar at the time, I knew only despair. What was the use of my research if I could not even save my own sister? That's why you abandoned your position in the Empire and came to Garrick Monk. My sister is far from the only victim. Many noblemen have done the same to their own wives, and I despise them for it. So my quest began. I would unlock the secrets of crests, make them available to any who desired. If I achieved my goal, the nobility would be rendered obsolete, and my sister could finally rest peacefully. However, all these years later, I am still far from achieving my goal. A world in which anyone can bear a crest. That's not so different from a world with no crests at all. Quite right. And that is why I have chosen to fight by your side. I cannot say what lies in your past. Yet I have seen your ideals and witnessed the power of your two crests. I feel certain that you, too, are a victim of this world, just like my dear sister. Professor Hanneman, please, say no more. I've made peace with my past. Now I look only to the future, to the world we're fighting to create. Very well. But if you will allow it, there is one more thing I would like to say on the subject. When I look at you, I am reminded of my sister and also of my own youth. Though I could not save my sister back then, I am different now. 
I can support you and lend you my abilities. I will fight for your cause in whatever way you need. Thank you. That means a great deal to me. Your knowledge and your experience are both invaluable. And your passion, too. I welcome your support. And in turn, I will do my best to earn the trust you have placed in me. That song... Oh, hello, Edelgard. Professor Manuela, that song you were humming, I feel as though I've heard it before, long ago. And I'm sure it was you singing it back then. At the Opera House in the Imperial Capital, perhaps. Why, yes. You must have seen me there. I am flattered you would remember it. I performed with the Middle Franc Opera Company in Enbar on numerous occasions. So it was you. I went to that performance with my uncle. I wanted desperately to see it again. But after that night, he took me to seek asylum in the kingdom. When I returned to the Empire several years later, you had already retired. Oh, that's a shame. So you only got to hear me sing once? Sadly, that's correct. Yet you still remember it, even the melody of the song I sang. I'm honored. That's how much of an impression your voice left on me. I must ask, why did you retire so soon? You could have continued for another 10 or 20 years. Indeed. Many singers perform for decades. But that wasn't for me. I wanted to go out on top. My voice is a gift from the goddess. However, as all things do, it will decline with age. One day, I will lose that gift. And so I decided I needed to learn to survive without it, long before that day came. I needed to prove to myself that I can live on, even after my voice returns to the Goddess. So despite your belief in the Goddess, you wish to live by your own strength? It's hard for me to explain. The Goddess supports me both spiritually and emotionally. Everything else is up to me. Professor Manuela, may I come in? Uh, this room, what... what happened here? Oh, nothing out of the ordinary. Why? Is something the matter? No, I just... Uh, can I help you tidy up? Uh, actually, I have to know. How did you make such a mess in the first place? Please don't ask for the details. Suffice to say, my room always looks like this after I've been dumped. Oh, right. Well, let's see what we can do about it. Your help was unexpected, but appreciated, Edelgard. Now, what can I do for you? I heard that you haven't been acting like yourself, so I came to see if you're doing all right. But the moment I saw you, I could tell you were troubled, so it seemed pointless to ask. I suppose it was rather obvious, wasn't it? Perhaps I should stop being quite so dramatic. All the same, dear, I'd like to repay you for helping me out. Name your prize. I don't need a reward. But if you wouldn't mind answering my question, I'd greatly appreciate it. Of course. What is it? I once asked you why you chose to retire. You said that the goddess supports you emotionally, but it's up to you to take care of the rest. I have to admit that I don't quite understand what you meant by that. Can you please explain? Did I say that? <laughs> I suppose so. From joining the Middle Franc Opera Company to becoming a diva of the grand stage. I went through so much to achieve what I did. <sighs> Looking back, I don't know how I made it. What happened during that time? A lot. My divinely gifted voice only got me to the edge of the stage. From there, I had to work hard to defeat my rivals. I did all of this by myself, through sheer force of will. All so I could stand center stage. Ah, I see I was wrong about something. I thought that being a devout believer implied a certain weakness of spirit, an inability to survive on your own. 
But you've proven me wrong, Professor Manuela. <sighs> Something on your mind, Edelgard? This may not be the best place to sit and think. An archer might try to take a lucky shot at you. Right you are. I appreciate your concern. <sighs> in here, I'm trapped in a whirlwind of political affairs. I just needed to escape for a moment to get some fresh air. I understand completely. May I ask what was on your mind? I'd like to help. To be honest, I still can't forget what you told me before. I don't want you to misunderstand and think I'm against everything the Church represents. There's good there, buried in the corruption. Still, I find it extremely difficult to step back and accept the good, overlooking all the rest. For the world to start anew, it's necessary for the nobility system and the Church of Saros to both be completely crushed. Perhaps. I suppose that might be the only way for you to achieve your goals. I believe so, but... Then I think about people like you, who are devoted to the Goddess. People who are unlike the others, who are willing to fight for themselves rather than leaving everything in the hands of a higher power. When I achieve my aim, I'll be crushing their... crushing your emotional and spiritual support. Yet despite all that, you're still here, still supporting me. Don't worry yourself about that, Edelgard. People are always weaker than you think, but never as weak as you expect. The Goddess is our silent foundation. She watches over our every step, but never gets directly involved. You, on the other hand, want to support us with your own flesh and blood, to push us forward toward a better future. <sighs> as it were, some problems require drastic measures, I believe you know that better than anyone. It takes strength to take those measures. That's why you inspire people. You're probably why some of them get out of bed in the morning. Oh, you're too kind. Now, I've just been around a bit longer than you, that's all. While we're on the subject, yes, the Goddess does supply me with emotional support, but so do you whether you know it or not. I... What do you mean by that? <laughs> Just what I said, my dear. Just what I said. Ugh, now I'm blushing. Let's change the subject, shall we? <laughs> as you wish. I think I've said quite enough as it is. <laughs> Tremble with wonder at the magnificence of my sorcery! Unbelievable! It's simple tea, but somehow it's shining with the colors of the rainbow. And the color's changing as it's being poured! How magical! Of course it's magical. I achieved it through magic! It's a spell of my own design, in fact. Impressed? Is this what you wish to show me? I must admit, I've never seen such a thing. Is it still potable? Is it still potable, she asks. Then I suppose you wouldn't mind taking the first sip. That was amusing, Constance. But out with it. What was that favor you wished to ask of me? It's a small thing regarding my house. I thought your highness might bend some slight effort towards seeing it restored from nothing. I had a feeling that was it. I wish I could help, but you must understand my present circumstances. Yes, yes, I'm aware. All the more reason for you to get in on the ground floor, as it were. My magical might is unrivaled, as I proved to you only moments ago. Surely you can see the obvious benefit in having the sorceress prodigy Constance at your beck and call. I agree that you are remarkable. That is beyond question. But how do you imagine Rainbow Tea will help me to achieve my aim? Uh, well, uh, just imagine the acclaim it will bring you at tea parties. It's a most worthy party trick, yes. But I have no use for such a thing. Well, well, it's 
it's not as if that's the only trick up my sleeve. That was merely a sample of my repertoire. I never cease my work in developing new magic. Your Highness is sure to find some of it useful. Constance, there's something important that I would like to talk with you about. Oh, have we not been discussing weighty matters all this time? It's regarding a truth that you and countless generations of House Nouvelle have occulted. Ah, that. If you ever feel like revealing all to me, I'd be happy to talk further. Until then, my apologies, but as the Imperial Princess, there's nothing I can do to help your cause. Of course. And now I shall make myself scarce. Good day. You've got a look of resolve on your face, Constance. Have you come to a decision? Quite so. I never waver for long, you know. I can read the signs as well as anyone. Things are in flux. I mustn't remain shackled by the past. I am ready to enlighten you regarding the secret that House Nouvelle has kept for generations. You have my gratitude. You will be rewarded for taking such a drastic measure. To be clear, this is about your crest, correct? <sighs> your instincts are sharp. According to the Empire's records, I bear the major crest of Macule. But those records are mistaken. In point of fact, the crest that I bear is... The major crest of Noah, one of the lost saints. That bloodline was believed to have died out. No one, not even the Imperial nobility, bears that crest. How then did you come by that bloodline? And how did you manage to thwart the Empire's investigations into the matter? All of the answers you seek are tied to House Nouvelle's origins. Close to a thousand years ago, Saint Noah parted ways with Saint Saros. She lived out her days in seclusion on what would become Nouvelle territory. Her children obscured their origins before serving the Empire. It wasn't long before they were ennobled. I suspect Saint Noah feared that revealing her crest would only lead to tragedy. So she passed it off as the crest of Macuel which already existed within the Empire. Yes, much like Saint Macuel, Saint Noah was known to be a masterful mage. Her magic ensured that any test would not reveal the true nature of her crest. Otherwise, someone may have exploited our bloodline long ago. Hmm. House Nouvelle was known for producing as few heirs as possible. It was also known for keeping its offspring pure, mostly by disallowing marriage with other houses. All of that effort was in order to conceal Noah's bloodline, wasn't it? Yes, but it was a factor in our house's ultimate downfall. Our priorities were, perhaps, not what they ought to have been. In sidestepping the internal strife within the Empire, we left ourselves open to the external threat posed by Dagda. With stronger blood ties to other houses, we might have had allies in our time of greatest need. Interesting. I always had the inkling that the Six Noble Houses were eager to see House Nouvelle fall. Thank you for trusting me with this, Constance. I swear that once I ascend the throne, I will do all I can to help you revive your fallen house. <laughs> your Majesty, might I have a moment of your time? Yes, of course. Unless... You're not planning yet another magical exhibition, are you? Knowing you, it seems a safe bet. I can't imagine what else it could be. I already promised to help you revive House Nouvelle. If our campaign continues as it has, we'll soon prevail. There's no need to keep inventing spells. I don't doubt that your majesty has things well in hand when it comes to the war. Yet why should I allow that to deter me from achieving my ultimate satisfaction? As the scion of Proud House Nouvelle, I shall bring about my grand achievement before my house is restored. On that, you may rely. You have a strong will and a strong mind. You do not consider yourself above concerted effort, either. Even during wartime, you trust your own ability to fight and survive. You're ever focused on the future and on the actions necessary to realize it. Where is this coming from? If there's an angle to be played with this praise, it eludes me. <laughs> I was only speaking the truth. I find your efforts to be admirable. Hmm. 
Your words are sweet. And yet... Yes? Please, go on. Forgive me, Your Majesty, but you promised that House Nouvelle would be restored. Yet you work toward a future with no place for the noble houses of old. Granted, in your unified Fodlin, the acting lord for each territory will come from noble stock. But in the long term, your system will replace the nobility. Our role will change significantly. That's exactly right. There will no longer be lords who inherently rule over a particular territory. Instead, nobles will act as government officials, working for the people in exchange for a salary. Officials will be selected from the general populace as well, bringing an end to the very concept of social standing. All will rise and fall by their own merits. And it is for those reasons that I continue my magical research. Even if nobility ceases to exist as a concept, the meritorious spellcraft displayed by House Nouvelle shall make us a household name. Hmm, I must admit your words strike a chord. I find myself oddly moved by your proclamation. So you see, Your Majesty, the fortunes of my house dovetail nicely with your plans. The road on which you stride courageously forward leads to my own bright future. I too believe that the future you wish for can be found at the end of this path we're cutting. Splendid! Oh, amid all this talk, I neglected to present my demonstration. Sit back as I, Constance Von Nouvelle, display the never-duplicated Nouvelle style of spellcraft. Uh, about that. Another time, yes? I have much to do elsewhere. No, wait! There's no time like the present! Why, it shan't take more than an hour or two! <laughs>